What is up, DS3TV? We are back for another video. This one is Fidel Castro's Dairy Adventures. And, um, yeah, so also subscribe to the channel. Want to get 1,000 subscribers by uh, Valentine's Day. And, uh, yeah, you can put whatever video you want me to react to in the comment section um, down below. And, yeah, I had coffee this morning. I am ready to watch the videos. Kind of energetic. And... Uh, yeah, yesterday I did get a, a comment that said, did I watch, um, like, did not watch the World War One history video before? I probably did on my other channel. Um, I did not, um, have that video saved, though, to my computer, so had to react to it again. But the good thing is I didn't remember it, so it was kind of like I was watching it for the first time. <laughs> Don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing, but... Yeah, so we're gonna get into the video. Uh, it's by Seven Little Academy. You know we love that channel here on DS3 TV, and um, yeah, let's get into it. Play. <laughs> Hey kids, let's talk about Fidel Castro. We're all familiar with Castro, right? Dictator of Cuba for the whole second half of the 20th century, main antagonist of the Cuban Missile Crisis, you know. Anyway, this yeah. man loves three things. He loves Cuba, he loves communism, and good God does the man love dairy. Yep, you heard me right. The all-powerful <laughs> dictator of communist Cuba is obsessed with anything related to milk and its derivatives. A joke. Boy, is a dairy god. A little chart here, right? Sorry, I just kind of want to say that I never, I never heard anyone say Dairy God before, and I kind of want to say it. That's what he is. And I call it the Leche Lovin Ladder. At the bottom, you got dairy farmers. Then you got Ross O'Donovan. Then Mr. Bones. Then starving babies. And then all the way up <laughs> at the top here, you got Fidel Castro. I wish I bled milk. Today, I'm going to share a few true stories that illustrate his preoccupation. Okay, the first one isn't really a story so much as a fact, but according to several sources, Castro was known to be able to eat 18 scoops of ice cream after a meal. That's more than two pints. If that doesn't what? impress you, then go try it for yourself. Me, I can barely manage a pint and a half on an empty stomach, and Castro's <laughs> doing it on top of a full meal. But it gets better. <laughs> Being such an ice cream connoisseur, Castro ordered the construction of an ice cream shop. But this isn't your average everyday parlor, not by a long shot. He built a straight okay. up ice cream complex, taking up an entire city block. This was a piece of modern architecture too, in total contrast to the surrounding slums. All for the- I would love to see a picture of that. The sake of ice cream. The place is called Coppelia, and it's still open today. Of course, Castro's obsession went beyond just personal pleasure. Dairy was so dear to him that it often found its way into diplomatic interactions. Like one time, a French diplomat came to visit, so Castro whips out some Cuban cheese. Specifically, though, it was Camembert cheese, a variety that France is famous for. French okay. guy was like, hey, not bad. It's almost as good as the French kind. <laughs> Try it again. I think you'll find it's even <laughs> better than the French. Alright, I wouldn't say that. I'm sorry, are you disrespecting my cheese? In my house? On my island? No, I mean, it's good. I just said the French kind is better. Maybe if you froggy fucks bathed once in a while, you'd be able to taste the cheese instead of your own B.O. I mean, he does have to insult a demographic every one of his videos. <laughs> and this so happens to be the, fr the French this time. Listen, you've got your cigars, we've got our cheese, live with it. Fine. Fuck him, it's good cheese. I'm paraphrasing just a little bit, but that's basically how it went down. So already, it's obvious that dairy is of great value to Castro. Most exceptional, however, is how this value reflected in his leadership. Naturally, having an entire nation at his disposal, Castro wanted to bolster the Cuban dairy industry as much as possible. But there was one problem. Cuba initially had two types of cows, called La Reinas and Zebus. La Reinas ah. came from the days when Spain ruled Cuba, and Zebus originated from India. Both of these cows are well suited to the Cuban environment, having a very high tolerance for heat. However, they don't produce much milk, they're mostly just raised for their meat. So Castro okay. decides to import thousands of Holsteins from Canada. Holsteins oh. are the classic black and white cows, and as we all know, you can juice these guys for days. They are utterly superior. <laughs> Only problem is, they're used to living in Canada, so when they're plopped down under the scorching Caribbean sun, it's gonna stress them out. They're not gonna be laughing cows by any means. So yeah. as a result, Castro's imports still didn't put out enough milk to satisfy his desires. 
At this point, your average run-of-the-mill dairy queen would have given up. But Castro, <laughs> he's more than that. He's a dairy dictator. So we ordered the construction of a giant air-conditioned complex with the sole purpose of providing a comfortable environment for his Holsteins. And it helped a little bit, but they were still stressed out. They still weren't putting out at their natural levels. And oh, as yeah. you can imagine, climate controlling an entire facility is very expensive, so Castro was forced to abandon the project. But like yeah. the astronaut he is, Castro held on to his dream of finding the Milky <laughs> Way. So he gathered a team of scientists and farmers and ordered them to breed together the Zebus and the Holsteins in order to produce a heat-resistant, lactose-pumping super cow. The breeding efforts were mostly a bust, never producing the bovine master race that Castro longed for. However, there was one exception. Under Castro's program, a single individual was born that met his expectations with flying colors. The cow was named Ubre Blanca, Spanish for white udder, and she produced <laughs> world record-breaking volumes of milk peaking at 110 liters a day. That's wow. more than 29 entire gallons of lactation. Needless to say, Castro was absolutely euphoric at this isolated success of his. To say he went ballistic would be an understatement. He went intercontinentally ballistic. Like, India hasn't got shit on the levels of cow worship that Castro performed. Daily updates were published in the Cuban national newspaper. <laughs> It's still juicy. <laughs> paper describing Ubre Blanca's health and productivity. And when she died in 1985, Castro commissioned a giant marble statue of the cow in her honor. He also had scientists harvest tissue and egg samples for the sake of preserving her DNA. After Ubre Blanca's death, Castro's plans for the Cuban dairy industry got even more desperate and ridiculous somehow. This is based off of an actual conversation okay. that he had with his team of scientists in 1987. Okay guys, hear me out. What if we make cows that are the size of dogs, so that way they can live in people's apartments with them. But why? Uh, Fidel, I, I don't think that's gonna work. No, 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 it'll work. You just <laughs> have to grow grass in the apartment, too. You can't be serious. Yeah, you just gotta put up some <coughs> fluorescent lights. Bam, little, uh, little, uh, little grazing patch for your doggy cow. You are a fucking lunatic. And obviously nothing ever came of that idea. And Cuba's dairy industry is still floundering today, sadly. So yeah, if you haven't gotten the picture by now, the dude likes milk. Imagine he's at the birth of his grandson, right? Ah, what a beautiful baby boy. Ah, uh, Fidel, there's something we need to tell you. Your grandson, he's lactose intolerant. Prepare the firing squad. Oh, anyway, there's plenty no. of other miscellaneous stories surrounding his little preoccupation, like the time the CIA tried to poison his milkshake, so I just decided to- I've heard about that, yeah, that the CIA tried to poison his milkshake. Hmm, that's pretty weird. Highlight a few big ones. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Good video by Sam Manella. Um, yeah. That was a great video. Subscribe to the channel, want to get a thousand subscribers by Valentine's Day. And, uh, yeah, I think that's the end of the video, so, uh, talk to you guys in the next video, and peace.